Second half presented by Dave's Cosmic Subs. Case Western Reserve. Out front, 7-0. Tight game, and frankly, this is kind of what you'd like when you're talking about two teams that are undefeated and battling for the top spot in the standings. Westminster gets us started from the 18-yard line. That's a pretty decent kick return from Vincent Giles, who has had some very impressive, fun, explosive moments in his career. But that was a more mediocre, uh, tame kick return. And off we go, first and 10 for Westminster. This can change the whole second half for Westminster here. If they come out, execute their offense, move the ball, move the chains, and get on the scoreboard, it's really going to bear well for the, you know, for the rest of the second half. It's all about getting off to a good start, though. Konechka turns and hands it off. And Case stuffs it quickly. Isaac Withrow, the tackle on Bryce Hill's halfback draw. Just nothing there. And that's Case Western's defense, not only this year, years past, last five, six, seven years, known for run defense. The faces change, some of the coaches change. Every single year, they are still able to come in, stop the run, and be stout. And it's because of, one, coaching. Two, the effort from the players like Cam Brown, Andrew Lease, Withrow. It's a team effort. Run defense is completely based on effort. Adam Poltrak in there, too, at the moment. Konechka wants to throw. Brown got behind him, almost batted away. I think they're going to call it a completed catch. Boy, it was right in front of the Spartan bench. And they said that he got his hands underneath it in time. Ian Valente, first down. Yeah, there was movement there. I, You know, D3 football, we don't have to worry about the, the coach's challenge or the replay, but that would definitely be one that would require a second look. So it's first and 10 from the 43, Schuster on the tackle. First down for the Titans with their 43 yard Almost knocked out back there. One more look. Well, he close. might have had it. He might have had it, you're right. Konechka got creamed and threw it a little off target. Trying to connect with Luca Body, but he had Cam Brown right on top of him. Just makes it tough. Yeah, so the receiver's streaking on the field, open opportunity there, but you know in the back of your mind as a quarterback, after that, you know, one, two seconds, Cam Brown is coming. It's just whether you get rid of the ball or not. And as you touched on in the first half, it seemed like Westminster was really trying to go with the quick game, the little ins and outs, you know, hitches, just to kind of prevent that D-line from getting anywhere near the quarterback. Grice in the game, a tailback, four-man rush. Dumped off in the flat over on the left-hand side. Chase Callis and the fullback couldn't come up with it. Pass was a bit too low, and it sets up third down and 10. Yeah, Konechka kind of, he would want that one back, and he'll see it on film. It was there, and again, Westminster stuck in third and long, really going to make it tough with that D-line bearing down on him. I see some of the cards being held up on the far side as they call the play in. Play clock's at 15, so plenty of time. Music blaring in the stadium, trying to rile up the defense. Konechka, good looking pass. He came back for the football. Caught by Connor Cox. Good throw, good catch. Big play for the Titans. Maybe their best pass play of the night. Coverage was not bad by Schuster at all. It's just good execution. Underthrown a little, but it kind of worked out. It was to the benefit of Cox. He's able to come back, kind of use his body, get in between Schuster and the ball. Huge gain for Westminster, and they've got it on the 30-yard line. It's officially white-knuckle time if your case. Right side, and that one got airmailed, looking Brown's direction. Yeah, Connection just looks a little off here in the second half so far, and it's it seems like they've gotten a little pass happy, and you know, in a perfect world, 50-50, run the ball, pass the ball. But it, it gets really tough when you're facing a defense like Case Westerns. It's almost like just running your head into a brick wall over and over and over. So, you know, if that's how it bears out here in the second half, that they're just going to have to throw the ball to get any movement, then maybe that's what they got to go with. But we'll see if they try and reestablish the run game here. Now, Grice, the tailback. He 
He's in to help block Josh Smith. Good thing. Brown catches over the middle. He dropped the football. Case pounces on it. And the Spartans with a huge takeaway. Slank. Poke that out. Travis Johnson poking it out there. And that's what we've been talking about. As soon as the offense for Westminster starts moving, starts getting some positive momentum, huge hitch. Defense is able to get the turnover, get the Spartans' offense back out there. Well, it was a good, clean pocket. Konechka had okay. plenty of time to find his open man. So it's first and ten case. And the promising first drive of this second half. Just as quickly as it looked like it was marching toward the red zone, the Titans turn it over. Saxton on the read option, decides to pass it. He had Robina open. Good play, good decision, good game. Well, Second it down and four. took us until the third quarter to use the, the fabled term RPO. We have our first <laughs> run-pass option sighting of the night, but that seems to be the big fad in football these days, and that's just because it puts the defense in such a difficult spot. You can't really stop everything, and Saxon able to take, it, you know, take advantage of some open space there. Calling it second and five. This is Zach Hall. Boy, he got hit hard and quick. Paul Gonzalez spying on him the whole way, running with him step for step, and then the defense finished him off. And I'm surprised. You know, Case's rushing offense, the best it's looked all night was on that opening drive. They really came out strong, came out swinging, getting positive movement. And ever since then, Westminster's defense has really tightened up, playing with great effort, great energy, and Every time a running back gets tackled in the backfield, it's not just one guy. There's two, three, four Westminster Titans there. Trips bunch to the right, third and seven. They need the 36. Saxton has Morgan underneath. He throws past the sticks, though. First down. It's grabbed and running Chase Witte. Huge play for the Spartans offense. Biggest of the night by far. Chase Whitty able to break a couple tackles there and really get the offense moving in the right direction. Look at Saxton. I think he wanted to find Morgan, but found a better option. And credit to Saxton for stepping up in the pocket there, buying himself a little extra time. Whitty with the old school look, doesn't need the gloves, just running people over. There's something fun about watching a guy who doesn't want to play with all of the flashy gloves and wristbands and armbands, somebody that just wants to go out there and maul you over. Chase Whitty, big time play. First and 10 from the 24. Saxton looking over the middle, now flushed out to the right, the ball came out. Paul Gonzalez has it. Westminster recovers a fumble. Just cannot get out of, the, out of their own way. It's actually comical. They, each of these teams is playing the identical game. Offense cannot get started. Defense wreaking habit. Defensive line getting after the quarterback, forcing fumbles. It's a carbon copy, and that's we expected it to be a close game, a competitive game, just not like this. Well, you might remember Westminster missed a field goal in the first half, but you're right. It, it's been a mirror either direction. Saxton just couldn't hang on to this one. A little careless with it. And here we go again. Go back. We'll see. I mean, each team trading blows, just unable to get the job done in the end. Green to the right. Cam Brown wouldn't let him out of his grasp, and he threw him to the turf with an exclamation point. There's a flag down in the middle of the park. 10-21 here left in the third. Personal foul, face mask, piece of defense. 15 yards to the previous spot. First down. That's tough. It's a tough play. And, you know, sometimes these face mask penalties, sometimes the face mask penalties, they paint it as, you know, it's intentional or whatever. When you're a D lineman and there's a little scat back running around, you're grasping at whatever you can get your hands on. So tough break for Cam Brown. Westminster will take it. And they'll take first downs any way they can get them at this point. You know, it's the second time they've gotten a first down because of a penalty. Tenth first down of the game for the Titans. Konechka under center, turns and extends the handoff to Green. Just outrunning the defense, he got upended. Good tackle by the cornerback, Colin Schuster. 
And there's the run game popping up a little more. The other thing with a, a rushing attack like Westminster's is, you know, the, the defense, they're not robots, they're humans. They're going to get tired and going to get worn out. If you're tackling these hard-running running backs for 15, 20 minutes of football play, by the time you get to that fourth quarter, it's hard. It's a lot tougher than it was, you know, at the break. Second down and three. You get a look there at Brown. Green once again right up the middle. Met quickly by Dylan Zeggers. Here we go again, third and short. Well, oftentimes they say the game is a game of inches, isn't it? You got to find a way to win the battle in the trenches, and this is at times been a really fun game to watch if you're a, a football purist and you like watching someone try to dominate the line of scrimmage. These two teams are grinding it out. Konechka zings it over the middle. Caught by the uh, fullback Collison who ran a nice route, picked up the first down. Yeah, big man showing off some hands, showing off a little shimmy there in the middle. It takes a trio of Spartans to get him down on the ground. But, again, this is money time for the Westminster offense. Able to get across midfield. It seems like every time that they've done that, you know, up to this point, about the 30, 35-yard lines when they really start getting bogged down for whatever reason. So, good drive so far. But, again, they need to get points on the board for it to be worth anything. Green bouncing around a few times. Finally found an opening. A couple of good tackles there. Travis Johnston, the first to hit him. Isaac Withrow there too. Second down and four after the pickup of six. Green can feel it. He's asking for the ball. He's looking at the yep. sideline saying, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. And it's, you know, running the football is such a rhythm thing. It's getting in your own groove, having that confidence that, you know, it's going to take more than one guy to get me on the ground, which has been the case. Second down and four. Case showing some pressure. Konechka had no chance. Absolutely swallowed. Andrew Lease. Yeah, you know, we've talked plenty about Cam Brown tonight, but the other, you know, senior true leader on that defensive line is Andrew Lease. Pittsburgh area kid, had a solid career, and, you know, he's had some injury problems in the past. Right now he's healthy, and he's a problem in the middle of the defense for the Spartans. To quote Andrew Rossman, the best third down play is a good second down play. That didn't go very well for the Titans. Nope. Now it's third and 11. Got to dig into the third and 11 portion of the playbook. All right, here we go. Konechka, good pocket. He's got time over the middle. The Titans on the board. It's a 42-yard touchdown. Beautiful find for Connor Cox. And there the dam finally broke. So like we've been saying, chipping away, chipping away, just looking for any opening that they can get. Money, money throw, right, you know, perfect, catches Cox in stride. The other thing is you had Cox matched up on a linebacker. It's not going to be a, a, you know, a matchup that favors the Spartans there. So all credit to the Titans finding the matchup that they wanted and, you know, exploiting it. Cox has been their guy, no doubt. Good hold, good kick, and we've got a tie ball game. 7-7 seven, seven score with 7-13 left in the third. Connor Cox, just to give you some uh, context here, Cox came into the game with 73 catches for over 1,000 yards in his career. That was his fifth career touchdown pass, or I should say touchdown reception. The next leading receiver on the team is converted corner Dwayne Brown. Time out on the field. We'll be right back here to Case Western Reserve. So Westminster on the board, Cole Konechka from a long way out. It was a good looking pass right through the air. Good tight spiral, 42 yards. And now it's game on. Yeah, you can see if you look over at the Westminster sideline, they can feel it. So they, as you know, just as well as Case Western knew coming into this game, they haven't been able to beat this team. They haven't. They have yet to beat them in conference play. And now they're starting to feel it, starting to feel the momentum, proving to themselves that they can hang with these guys. 
Short kick. Case will take it from the 32 and call it quits from there. Yeah, series history all time, 3-0, the Spartans against Westminster. First time they met was back in 2016, which was two years after Case joined the President's Athletic Conference. Only game they played so far here was a 41-10 win for the Spartans, but I don't think there's any doubt. Well, the substitution, or excuse me, offside on the kickoff, five yards to be added on to the end of the kick. First down, Case Western. All right, so five additional yards for Case. Anyways, what I was trying to say there, I, I don't think there's any doubt. This is the best Westminster team that Case has seen in their four iterations. Yeah, I'm, I'm honestly a little surprised. They've had, you know, the athletes, the skill, everything in the past, but this team really shows they're able to execute, tackle well, handle the fundamentals, and it's keeping them in the game at this point. Saxton wants his chance to show off his arm. So he dumps it to Donald Day for a catch and run of a little over 20 yards. Yeah, nice little throwback. Leaking the running back out on the wheel route on the backside. And that could be a tough throw. You know, Saxton did a good job not to, not to see the wide open guy and kind of panic. So hitting his running back in stride and Spartans are across midfield. Officially 21 yards. Good first play of the drive for Case and perhaps the offenses can start to get into a rhythm here. Mid-third quarter, under the lights at Case Western Reserve. Day, this time on a handoff, barrels his way down to the 38. There's the movement, the offensive line kind of getting back to their roots, firing off the ball. And if Case is, you know, if they're looking to get back to their normal offensive output, they have to be able to have that dive up the middle. That's the bread and butter. No matter what is going on, they need to know that they can give the ball either to Hall or Day and get three or four yards whenever they want. Let's get a little love to running backs coach Ron Dolciato, who joined the staff this year. Greg Doubleak said he was thrilled to have him join the team. It's been 18 years since those two guys coached together after 12 years together coaching over at John Carroll, where they both played and were teammates together. In completion down the left side, and... It's sort of a side note, but they both deserve congratulations. They were members of the 1989 football team that was inducted into the John Carroll Athletic Hall of Fame last night. Both were at the ceremony and had a chance to relive some, uh, some fun old memories together and comes full circle to get a chance to coach. Obviously, they coached against each other for a few years when Coach Dolciato was over at St. Vincent, but now he's on staff and they're pulling rope in the same direction again. Yeah, anytime you can add someone that's got head coach experience like Dolciato does, that's a huge help to double act from a, you know, a culture standpoint and then also the X's and O's. Third and six, Saxton under duress, looking for some help. He dumps it to Day. Oh, it's a broken play, and it works out well. How about that? That was phenomenal effort by Day. He got, you know, he got stuck at the line, kind of thrown off course, able to get up. Saxton, he had him there. He knew he was there. He's just waiting for him to kind of leak open. Michael, or I should say uh, for the uh, Titans, that was linebacker Garrett Bishop. That was chasing Saxton the whole way. So a couple of good plays through the air here. Donald Day is having his number called a lot. That's not a big surprise. See Day come off the field. Hopefully he's okay. Looked a little banged up. Zach Hall got the football and got immediately taken down. Good play there by defensive lineman Hunter Burns. Yeah, I mean, anytime that you're getting the handoff and immediately you have a defensive lineman in your face, there's just not a whole lot that you can do. You have no, no chance to accelerate, no chance to you know, put any move on them, and that's, that's the key to this defensive line play. If you see every negative play that the Spartans have had, it's been penetration by the Westminster Titan defense. Yeah, you know what? That was actually Joey Lane on the stop. I beg your pardon. All right, second and 11. Negative play on first down puts Case behind the chains, and it'll stay that way after an incompletion thrown near side toward Morgan. He just hasn't hit. been able to get going today. No, he hasn't been able to get into his normal rhythm. And, you know, credit to the, the Westminster defense. They've been getting in his face, and, you know, whether they actually get there, he just knows they're coming. The other thing that they've done a really good job of is when they can't get to the quarterback, they've had arms up 
jumping, affecting the passing lane, affecting his vision. And it's they've done a great job. I mean, we've talked about it. He's one of the you know premier passers in the the entire country, especially in the PAC conference, and he just hasn't been able to get going tonight. Morgan, Witte, and Robina all wide left. Saxton up in the pocket. Rolls back to the left, and Paul Gonzalez rips him down. Yeah, design QB draw there, kind of going back to the Rob Kuda days where Coach Deblack called it about 35 times a game. But, <laughs> you know, just because they don't run that play as often doesn't mean it's not going to be effective. We've seen Saxon show off the wheels a little bit tonight, and it looked like it was there, but then the speed of Gonzalez is able to close up that gap and get Saxon on the ground for a loss. He'll be pushing it for a field goal try for Robertson Albrecht. And by the way, Case is on their fourth long snapper of the year. Perhaps that went into the decision too. It's fourth and 13 from the 28. Coach Debelak, by the way, mentioned he likes his depth at long snapper, but it could be a tough spot. Saxton going to throw. Double clutched. That's a completed pass, but well short of the first down. Michael Wojcikowski on the reception, but nowhere near long enough. Just not a great end of the drive. Again, once they get around the 30, 35-yard line, kind of sputter it out. And, I mean, they're putting a lot of pressure on the case defense. It's, you know, with the offense not being able to go out there, extend the lead at all, the defense time, and again, has been asked to step up. They've done it so far, holding this high-powered Westminster offense only seven points as we you know, come to the end of the third quarter is impressive, but... Football's a team game. Unless the you know, unless the defense is able to come up with a score of their own, it's, it's going to be a long night for them. Case is now 2 of 4 on third downs tonight. Meanwhile, Green, the first handoff of the drive, and like the Spartan defense, five Navy jerseys over to wrap him up, including Skyler Wattis. And this might be the game where, because the offenses are struggling so much, it might take a special teams play. It might take a defensive touchdown, anything to get points on the board. Clock's approaching three minutes as Greg Debelak tries to hold it together on the sideline. I imagine he's probably a little frustrated the offense hasn't found pay dirt more, but he's locked in a real meat grinder. That was a good fake handoff to Keanu Grice, and instead Frank uh, Antuono took it over to the left-hand side. So they're bringing the defensive end, Antuono, in here now at, in not a... Uh, <laughs> Not a wildcat situation. That's yeah, he's a big body. Big body, definitely a change of pace from the other, you know, smaller, shiftier backs. Short yardage looks like, you know, they will be going with the wildcat formation. He's been keeping it to this point. We haven't seen the pass. I wouldn't expect it, but always a possibility. Third and three. He's running left. Met three defenders. Boy, it's going to be close. I think they may give it to him with forward progress. Yep, moving the chains. And if you're Westminster, this is a drive where you really want to impose your will on the Case defense. Case's defense has been out there a good amount of time here in the second half. Start to see some hands on the hips. This is where you can really start grounding and pounding them. Patrick Crossy got knocked backwards a little bit. You talk about the, the game looking like a mirror image. I mean, some of the statistics are pretty mirrored. Case has some more yards of total offense, but they've been unable to finish drives. Konechka wants to air it out, looking for Brown. That's incomplete. Holy smokes, I'm stunned there's no flag for pass interference. Yeah, it was kind of an awkward play near the, you know, the receiver or Luke Bedell. Nobody really had any idea where the ball was, and that kind of just results in them running into each other and not really having a good picture. Well, that was thrown by Antuono. That was not Konechka back there. Cole comes back in the game here. I think Westminster was hoping that perhaps they would benefit from the lack of completed pass on the trick play. Yeah, it's one of those situations where you throw it up, there's the chance he's going to catch it. There's also the chance sometimes you just throw a ball up, you know, kind of fishing for pass interference. Unable to get the call there, and second and ten for the Titans. Kanetsch going to throw. Looking down the middle, in the seam, Cox in stride. There he goes. Connor Cox angling back to the left, and he's in. A 70-yard touchdown. Twice for Cox in the third quarter. And Westminster has the lead. 
Kid's a gamer. He's been doing it his entire career, able to get behind Pat Crossy there. And Kineshka with the on the, you know, throw again, right in stride, on the money, able to keep Cox moving in the right direction, and then it's just speed and effort from there. Tanner Dudek on to attempt the point after. How about Connor Cox? Wow. And here, this is kind of the issue. You know, when Case Western's got those solid Not drives out. in the first half, unable to punch Injury it in, time. you let a talented Injury team time. like Westminster hang around, it's, it's going to bite you eventually. That's Cox that is, you know, having a tough time. Looks like he might be getting sick. I hope he's okay. So we'll step aside here for a moment. Westminster 13, Case 7, waiting for the point after attempt coming up shortly. 128 left third quarter here at Case. Anova Living is a modern, amenity-rich residential community located in Cleveland's Greater University Circle neighborhood, offering studio, one, and two-bedroom apartment homes. Enjoy all-inclusive living with convenient on-site shopping, 24-hour concierge services, a 24-hour fitness center, resident lounge, and more. All within close proximity to Case Western Reserve University. Anova Living online at anovaliving.com. Well, you saw it there right as we were coming back from the commercial break. The extra point, no good. And... That's the kind of thing that can loom large down the stretch of a one-score game. That's a big miss for the Titans. Yep, no touchdown by Case, obviously going to put them ahead. And a missed extra point like that can be weird. So all the momentum in the world to Westminster, they've scored, you know, 13 straight points. And something as little as just one tiny little extra point like that can really throw off the team. And it also gives, you know, the Spartans just a little bit of energy. Glad to have you on board with us all night long. With Andrew Rossman, former Spartan, and Brendan Gulick filling in for Andrew Luffglass this week. Case Western Reserve University undefeated 3-0 through their first three. Westminster 4-0. Neither team probably willing to tell you that they've played the hardest of schedules yet. It's just sort of the way things have shaken out. And both teams are finding this one is kind of a good old-fashioned slobber knocker. How about a kick to the 35-yard line there? I'm wondering if perhaps all of a sudden Westminster is lacking faith in, uh, in their kicking game. I'm not sure why Dylan Kidder buried that one like that. It's, that's pretty darn good field position for Case. Yeah, all night they've, for whatever reason, they've been timid about kicking the ball deep and letting Travis Johnson get his hands on it. They, you know, you've seen two pooch kicks, which to their credit, they almost recovered one of them with the fumble, but the squib kick there, like I said, not really sure why that's in the game plan, but it is. It's definitely a, you know, an intentional thing to keep it out of the kick returner's hands. Well, keep an eye here wide right on Ryan Coolidge. He's lined up at wide receiver, but he is the backup quarterback as well. You just never know. This is Day hesitating. And the block set up. Helped him pick up four. Yeah, good patience by Day there. Just again, ho-hum, three yards, get into their, you know, their second down offense here. Still, at this point, I, at least from my perspective, Colt Morgan not really having a huge impact on this game. He's been a non-factor. Yep. And, you know, that can change. We've seen Cox on, on the other side have two huge plays after not really doing a whole lot in the game. So he's there. Just to this point, they haven't been able to get that connection going. Morgan's got three catches for 18 yards until right now. He picked up about 18 yards on that grab right on cue. And there we go, making us look good in the booth here, Colt. Yeah, I mean, if you look, when he lines up, you can – there's a clear physical advantage for Colt Morgan, but across the board, Westminster's DBs, they've been up to the challenge. It's been a, a group effort. I don't think it's been any one guy that's locked him down, and they've really – and, you know, outside of that catch right there, eliminated him from the game. First and ten. Case's problem has not been picking up first downs. It's been finishing drives. Saxton looking back to the left, throws it into the foot of a defender. Westminster thought perhaps it could be grounding, but on a screen pass, not the case. Yeah, trying to set up the wide receiver screen there to Morgan, and Westminster defense is all over it. Had no chance of 
you know, any success there. And those are kind of hit or miss plays. You're either going to hit it for a 15-yard gain or kind of end up like that where you just got to bury it into the ground. The time of possession has been pretty evenly split. Westminster's fans are still raining boos from the crowd. Second and ten. There's 12 seconds left in the third quarter, and Saxton looking for Donald Day, and Drew Saxton got planted. Again with the screen pass, you know, heavy with the screens here, at least on this drive. And the one thing with the screens is it's really, really difficult when you have a defense that's as, as athletic and as quick moving as this Westminster one is. They're able to, even if they over pursue, realize it too late, they can recover really quickly like they've shown. Drew popped back to his feet, so that's a good sign. Third and ten. Coach Tablack probably thinking to himself he's got two plays to get ten yards here. Yeah, it's about an area of the field Case has lived in tonight. Looking for Morgan. Instead, Day in the flat. He caught it but went down before he wished he did. That'll end the third quarter. Well, at least the Spartans have an extra tick or two to think about it with a fourth and six upcoming to start the fourth. Fourth corner will be presented by Innova, and it starts when we come back. 13 unanswered points for Westminster, trying to run their record to 5-0. Intercontinental Suites has been transformed into much more than a hotel. It is a center of wellness and tranquility, featuring renovated suites, an expanded fitness center, and pure rooms for guests requiring the most allergen-resistant rooms on the market. C2, our Mediterranean-style restaurant and bar, accentuates the ambiance of relaxation and rejuvenation. Chef Omar Jones has designed a menu full of fresh, locally grown herbs and vegetables along with a flavorful cuisine inspired by the beneficial Mediterranean diet. Call the Intercontinental today at 216-707-4300 or visit us at hotelsclevelandclinic.com or on Facebook. Beautiful fall night at Case Western Reserve University where the Titans of Westminster College on the road have scored two unanswered second half touchdowns. Case will start this fourth quarter presented by Inova with a fourth and six. Carney is the running back. Play clock's at 10, Saxton gets it off fine. Looking up the left side, Morgan out of reach. It was there. He had it, just unable to, unable to extend out there and get the catch. Good, you know, there's a healthy amount of contact there from the DB, but good no call, letting them play, letting them bump, bump a little bit. And you see he got behind him, just unable to you know, finish it off. Case is two of five on fourth downs tonight. That might feel like a lot of fourth down conversions, but frankly, they've pretty much all come within the same 15 yards of each other. Yeah, I think 90% of Westminster's drives have started between the you know 25 and 35, but same, pretty much the same story for the Case offense all night. First and 10. Connor Cox with two touchdown grabs in the second half. Good run up the middle for Bryce Hill. Big first down, first drive carry. Yeah, that's definitely far and away Hill's best run of the night. Offensive line really making it easy on him there, and then he shows that burst. It's it's really tough to tackle a guy that can kind of start and stop and accelerate, accelerate as well as Hill can. Well, it's been pretty balanced as we expected tonight. I'm not sure if there's any one particular back that's really burst onto the scene. They've all struggled at times. Hill can't get to the outside, but he shakes out of a couple tackles and gets back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe picked up one. Tyler Green, eight carries for 26 yards. Bryce Hill, four for 11. Keanu Grice, four for seven. The longest running play of the night is eight yards. That should be telling you something about Case's defensive front, how hard they've made it tonight. Yeah, like I said at the beginning, it's all about tackling with this Westminster team, because if you don't, then they can be off of the races. So credit to the Case defense so far, being able to wrap up the running backs. It's just been Cox on the outside has been killing them. 
especially in the second half. Konechka down the right side. It is bobbled and tipped away. And that's the same exact play that they scored on earlier, so. He tried to hit Cox, but he threw in a triple coverage here. See Travis Johnson down, middle linebacker running the field, running the seam. Nick Catalastic also, also able in the, to get in there and kind of, you know, affect the reception. So Westminster, third and ten here. See if they go back to Cox. He's He's been far and away their best offensive player for the night. Danny Dennison in the game in the slot on the right-hand side. Keanu Grice is stretched out wide left. Third and ten. Fumble. Whether or not he was sacked or a fumble, either way, I don't even think you can call that a coverage sack. You just call that Cameron Brown. Cam Brown <laughs> took the left tackle, decided to bench press him and put him on his butt, and then go to the quarterback and get another strip sack. It seems like every single game he's got one of those. He's got two tonight. He is so much fun to watch. Just at some points looks like he's playing a different game than the offensive lineman. You might be able to convince some people of that. Robina back deep to return the punt. He's asking for a fair catch and gets it at the 31-yard line. Better punt there from John Syback. Well, Westminster with a lead, so they're willing to play back and forth and back and forth. Somewhere along the way, Case needs to step up and make a play. Spartans had a, a long rush of 14 on the night. They've had some good completions. Chase Witte had a 47-yard catch. They've had a couple of other plays that have gone for more than 20, but again, it's been the, the finishing of drives that's really bothered them. Picking up first downs, not necessarily an issue. It's been the ultimate bend, but don't break defense from the Titans tonight. Saxton looking, looking. Finally finds an open man. 32-yard line. Brought in by Morgan. Yeah, and that's a credit to Morgan there, just continuing to fight. Offensive line with strong protection, protection giving Saxon that chance to just look and look and look and wait and wait and wait. Morgan finally able to get open there. And as a DB, it's extremely hard to just stick on a guy for five or six seconds like that. You might be able to cover him initially, but at some point they're going to wiggle free. Good look there at the offensive line and... See if Case can come up with a good second down and four play. Linebacker Bishop backing off pre-snap. Saxton throwing Morgan a jump ball. Colt Morgan, did he pull it in? He got it. There it is, there's the big man. He bobbled it, but was able to corral it against his knee. Yeah, and you see Kevin Brown had the coverage there. He covered him for 30 yards beautifully, and then at the end, one of the things that makes Colt great is he's able to slip free and just kind of let the defender bypass, go past him. Colt able to elevate and come down with the catch. It seems like Saxon's finally starting to get in a little bit of a rhythm. But again, have to find the end zone for, for it to mean anything. And First. looking at the scoreboard, that mixed extra point keeps looming up there. The Spartans are able to get it in the end zone, then have, they'll have a chance to take the lead. Saxon on first and ten, wiggles out of the pocket, but can't get away from Paul Gonzalez as he throws it left side, and they rule it incomplete. That was a heck of an effort by both Saxon and Gonzalez. There's a flag, though, on that far side. All right, let's see what the deal is. You see the hat down there, too. That might mean that... Receiver ran out of bounds under his own. Yep, and the key is going to be, was he forced out or did he did he willingly step out of bounds? Tough judgment call sometimes. Jack Thorne, our referee. Went out of bounds, on his own. Came back in. That's illegal. So lost it down. Be second down. Well, it essentially works out as the incomplete pass that it was in the first place. Second and ten. And Carney and Hall in the back in the backfield here together. Not a whole lot of rushing attack so far for Case in the second half, but can change in a heartbeat. Hall nine carries, 18 yards in the game. Carney has only carried it once, negative two 
You don't need to run it when you've got Colt Morgan with nobody around him. Saxon ties the game from 31. Finally able to find a crack in the Westminster defense. It wasn't a defender within eight yards of Morgan when he caught it. Could have rolled into the end zone. And Case is able to respond. That's the 25th career touchdown for Colt Morgan. On the evening, he's gone over 1,500 receiving yards. And with this upcoming extra point, Case could take the lead. Albrecht puts it up and through. You know, when you're on your fourth long snapper, you're holding your breath a little <laughs> bit on plays like that that have such meaning. It's extra points. They can make or break the game. And just, you know, sitting back, reviewing that drive, really impressed by Saxton. He said nothing going all night. No space, been unable to find anyone. Morgan was invisible up until about five minutes ago. But that's what makes Saxton so good. He stays focused, trusts that his offense is, you know, eventually going to get there. And here we are, back and forth. Exactly the game that we thought it would be. Well, you can stop by the Jolly Scholar for 10% off after the game here this evening. Uh, don't forget the Holiday Inn Cleveland Clinic, the preferred partner of Case Western Reserve Athletics. Mention CWRU teams when you book your next day. 14-13. I don't know if we would have predicted this score necessarily or the way the game is played out, but sure has been fun to watch these two teams play. And frankly, you never know how the season is actually going to unfold, but if you think about the potential implications of a PAC title, this could almost be a de facto championship game. This that is a playoff game. I yeah. think everyone involved would agree with that. W&J is looking forward to having something to say about that next weekend. Travis Johnston with a good special teams tackle after Bryce Hill brought the uh, brought the kick back to the 28. Let's see what the Titans decide to do offensively. They've started to move the ball better. Obviously, Connor Cox has been effective. Showed a little bit of creativity, but if they can't stop number 44 there, they're going to have some trouble. Yeah, as just as Case Western offense had to come out and respond, now it's Westminster's turn. Looks like they're going to start with Grice in the backfield and. All night, as we knew they would, they've been rotating the running backs, and that really helps out in the fourth quarter. Nobody's going to have tired legs. Everybody's going to be fresh and able to, you know, contribute to the running attack. Grice ran into his own offensive lineman. That slowed him up when he was tackled by the second level of the defense. Good one from Jonathan Stevens. Got a little help, too, from Withrow. Second down and nine. Ian Valente's played probably less than half of the offensive snaps, but he's a good wide receiver. Split out wide on the left here. Dump to the right. Grice with a hesitation shimmy. And it's well more than enough to get to that first down marker. That was a really well designed play. Not of you know, not the traditional screen where you see the entire line flown out to the right. I think they just had one lineman out there lead blocking for Grice, but really well designed. They caught the Spartans again in a blitz, which is the the risk reward of this defense, and Grice able to pick up the first down. Scoring drives for Case Western have gone four plays, 69 yards on the most recent one. 13 plays, 67 yards to open the game. Westminster's scoring drives have also been lengthy. Grice right through the middle. Spun out of it, and it cost him. Connor Cox has caught two touchdowns, one from 42 yards out, seven plays, 73 yards. And Connor Cox finished a five-play, 81-yard drive on a 70-yard touchdown pass. It really wasn't going very far, but Cox got open over the middle, caught it, and ran another 40. Yeah, Cox has got a heck of a stat line tonight. Six receptions, 161 yards, two touchdowns. <laughs> and there's still 10, the minutes, 10 minutes left in the game. Second and eight. From the 43, Konechka looking underneath. High throw, but pulled in by Antoine Jones. And a good run afterwards moves the chains. Oh, there's, yeah, we got a personal foul here. We see who they caught. Someone's getting a little chippy down there, but 
Someone just cost their team 15 yards. Boy, these are critical mistakes at the end of the game. Looks like it's going against Case. Dead ball, personal foul, 13 white. <laughs> Number three of the defense. Those penalties are offset. The result of the play is the first down. All right, so there are offsetting penalties. That was kind of odd. Usually, right away, they'll say there are two fouls on the play. <laughs> result of the play, a first down from the 48-yard line. Yeah, well, it's been about four plays since we've seen a strip sack from Cam Brown, so I would, <laughs> I would expect take. something to happen here in the next couple. But, I mean, the Westminster offensive line is doing whatever they can just to keep him away. Konechka looking right. <laughs> when you're so focused on one guy, Joshua Smith says, well, I'll take care of this. And, you know, Josh Smith, his first two years, was a really, really good athlete at the safety position. You put him at the linebacker spot, and he's elite. And you see it there. He's just too fast, too agile. The offensive linemen aren't able to pick him up. And he's wreaking, been wreaking havoc in the backfield at, you know, at all times that he's been on the field. Valente wide left. He's out there with Antoine Jones. Wide on the right, Dwayne Brown. Cox in the slot right. Second and 18. Konechka zings it left side. He threw it into trouble. It's bobbled and picked. Fumble after the interception. Travis Johnston, the inside linebacker, dropping back into coverage. And he takes the interception. Johnson's been all over the field. Brian Victor looked like had the pass break up there. Then almost complete disaster with the ball popping out again, but that's why it's a team sport. Luke Bedell able to hop on the ball there and make sure his Spartans maintain possession. But, I mean, turnovers, especially in a tight game like this, turnovers are really going to make or break how the offense's, night, the offense's night goes. Case Western at this point has been able to take advantage more so than Westminster has. We'll see if they can put a little distance on the scoreboard between the two teams. First and 10 from their own 47. This has been a great football game. Time for the Spartans to try to run some clock here. Zach Hall gets his number called for the first time in a little while. He's got 10 carries now for about 26 yards tonight. Second down and three. Donald Day's run for 27 yards. It's not been a particularly good running game. Meanwhile, somehow Drew Saxton has crept up to 283 through the air. Colt Morgan has another 100-yard receiving game. Saxton's thrown it for 200 yards in the second half. Feels like it's almost entirely been to uh, Morgan and Chase Whitty. Near side, in the flat. A little catch and run from uh, Case Western's Mario Robina. Yep, Case setting himself up, you know, a good spot, third and one here. And I really, really think this is a drive that they need to do whatever it takes to get in the end zone. You know, this four, one point game here, it seems like the momentum's kind of shifted back a little bit to him. And, you know, we talked about how Westminster, it's all about believing that they can hang with this team, believe that they can beat them on their home turf. As Case starts throwing punches back and forth, then it starts creeping in the back of Westminster's mind. Okay, well, maybe it's here we go again. Donald Day first down. Picked up five on third and one. There is an injured Titan on the field. He was slow to get up. I don't, I don't know if he was necessarily... Boy, I, I almost thought that... Ian Barr was trying to get up on his own. That was kind of odd, and they just blew it dead. Well, either way, the good news is Barr looks like he is going to be okay. But we'll step aside real quick. Now, ah, you know what? He gets back to his feet that quickly. All right. So we'll keep it here. Barr had that look on his face like, why'd you blow it dead? I was getting up. <laughs> Either way, Case Western Reserve 14, Westminster 13. The difference in the game? A missed extra point. 
Spartans obviously are looking to score here and add to their one-point lead, but I think it's a, it's a delicate balance of trying to work some clock in addition to trying to get in the end zone. Yeah, ideal situation from here. They can work another three, four minutes off the clock. Touchdown, obviously the goal, and touchdown put them up 21-13 and force Westminster to get a touchdown and convert the extra point or convert the two-point conversion based on the miss earlier. You see Carney and Saxton, but Day gets the handoff. Bounces to his right. And he got stopped by a couple of guys. Darius Doty was there. And a good tackle, too, from Paul Gonzalez. You hear lots of the coaches in the stands telling all the players what to do. Oh, yeah, everybody's an all-conference coach. <laughs> That's yeah. my favorite one. Use the clock. I like that. Thank and you. I'm sure Coach Debs <laughs> takes it and does exactly what all the, the fathers out there are doing. That's pretty funny. Second down and nine. Still 12 seconds on the play clock here. Spartans by one. Well, that's not what you want. Ball starts. Number 15 of the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Ryan Coolidge, the culprit. Yep, just a lack of focus. Spartans down now, second and 15. Huge play. I mean, even if you get it back to the original line of scrimmage where you get it to third and 10, that's monumentally bigger than having the third and 15. Should the clock be running here on an offensive penalty? I don't think so. Spartans will take it. Yeah. I think they got a little lucky. Well, a little home cooking from the scoreboard operator. Saxton looking over the middle. That one's caught by Robina. Big catch. Sets him up. Much more manageable. Third and four, third and five. And if you're Westminster, now it's the clock becomes a serious concern. Both teams, all three timeouts. I don't think Westminster's at the point where they're going to start calling them. They're going to probably want to save those for when they get the ball back. But Well, you're right. This is a big play. If they can stop a third down try, especially if it's an incomplete pass, that would really help the Titans. I think the Spartans would be wise to try and run it, especially if this might be four-down territory because they've been here all night and it's been four-down territory. Day. Oh, he's got lots of space. Perfect. Perfect play call, perfect execution, exactly what they wanted. And like you touched on, as soon as they get that first down, that's another minute, minute and a half, unless they force Westminster to start calling timeouts. Clock's inside, five minutes. Case Western Reserve by one. They can feel it. You can see the, the offense gaining confidence. Offensive lines really tightened up here recently. About the second half Drew Saxton's had. He's a pretty mature young quarterback. Day gets his number called again. Doing the high knee drill over the right guard and right tackle. And if you're Westminster, this is where you need to get back to what you did the entire first half. Bend but don't break. Forcing Case to kick a field goal here is enormous. Completely different than giving up a touchdown. Important note, no matter what, unless Case goes for two, it is going to be a one-score game. So Westminster will get the ball back and have a chance to either tie or take the lead. Clock slowly ticking away. If you're a Spartan fan, looks like it's on steroids racing down towards zero if you're pulling for Westminster. Donald Day picks up enough. Moves the chains for a first down. First and goal for Case. And the clock begins to wind again. Yeah, and this is where Saxon needs to be aware of the clock. Work it down, snap it two or three seconds every time. I mean, even if it's that results in an extra, you know, 10, 12 seconds over the course of three plays. So it's important. Just pay attention to the clock. Work it. Take advantage of it. Somewhere here, Westminster is going to have to start taking timeouts, but I would imagine it's not till after this play. 
Day hesitating, looking around, and he got hit. Good work by Joey Lane coming across the outside. No timeout yet. And Coach Deblek, he can't afford to take his foot off the gas here. Yes, they've gotten down here to this point. Great drive so far, burned a lot of clock. They need to put the ball in the end zone, though. This Westminster team's been pretty impressive for a group that's 4-0 and and had, frankly, played four pretty substandard opponents. Been really impressed with the way they've competed tonight. The difference in the game right now is a missed extra point. Day. Wrapped up in the backfield, and Westminster takes a timeout. I think Case probably could have used another 10 seconds on the play clock there. It looks like Brett Carney's hot one off a little bit, but he'll have at least a minute here to catch his breath. West, Westminster, first charge time out of the house. We'll step aside, too, and come right back. Game's coming down to the wire here at Case. Anova Living is a modern, amenity-rich residential community located in Cleveland's Greater University Circle neighborhood, offering studio, one, and two-bedroom apartment homes. Enjoy all-inclusive living with convenient on-site shopping, 24-hour concierge services, a 24-hour fitness center, resident lounge, and more. All within close proximity to Case Western Reserve University. Anova Living online at anovaliving.com. Well, that's what we're looking at. 223 left in regulation with Case out front 14-13. Hope you'll stick around for the very end of our broadcast tonight. Our post-game show coming up shortly, uh, shortly after we finish up. And we'll name the Rascal House player of the game. So stick around for our coverage here, wrapping up statistically how, the, how things went. We'll let you know what's coming up for both teams here next week. Only two undefeated teams left in conference play. Game four for Case, game five for Westminster. Spartans have third and goal here from the eight. Westminster still two timeouts left. Finding the end zone has to be a priority. Saxton, right side. Caught and kept out. I think Robina made the catch. Westminster with the timeout. Boy, that's a that's a really good touchdown saving tackle. And if you're Greg Debelak now, inside the one, you have to think about going for it, no? I would go for it. And that's as much about the confidence I have in my offensive line. It's also about the guy that's sitting on the bench right now, Cam Brown. Say hypothetically they go for it, they don't get it. Westminster's taking over the ball on the one, two-yard line. Chaos is going to ensue with the defensive line of the Spartans. Yeah, I think it's a, cal it's a calculated risk. Again, if they don't get it, you have that D-line coming after the Westminster offense. They also have to go 99 yards with one timeout left in two minutes. So I would absolutely go for it here. Completely changes the game if you get it. And the downside, honestly, if you don't, it's not that bad. It's it's not going to end the game if you don't get it. So I would bet that Coach Debelak is going to go for it, and I think that's the right call also. Well, the only risk you run is, as you mentioned, it's calculated. It's a mitigated risk. But you could have a negative play. You could have a fumble, something that would hurt the uh, awful field position you would try to give Westminster if you don't get in. But you sort of – you sort of have to trust that on uh, on a fourth and goal when you need one yard and your guys have gotten it done up front here in the second half, you tell them in that huddle, hey, go win the ball game for us. Yeah, this is a culture play. At any point, you should be able to trust your offensive line, the big guys, to get you one yard. The locker room knows it, the coaches know it, the players know it. You need to be able to execute here. Just to stress, even if Case gets in the end zone here, this game is not over. Drew Saxton looking back to the sideline. He's got a couple wide receivers spreading things out. Saxton hands to Donald Day, and he's not going to get close. They grabbed him around the ankles early. Day is trying to lean in, but that's not going to happen. Westminster gets the stop they need, and it's still a one-point game. No, it had no chance. Everybody in the whole stadium knew where it was going, including the Westminster D-line. 
They were able to get lower than the, the Case Western offensive line. Like you said, cut off the engine, wrap up Day's legs, and just had no chance of getting in there. Bryce Thomas, great tackle, a young man from St. Mary's, Georgia. They moved the football from outside the one to inside the one. 2.06 to play. We haven't seen really much, if any, holding calls you know, to this point in the game. Keep in mind, yeah, holding, call in, holding call in the end zone will result in a safety, so just yeah, something to watch out for. The, Brown on the left side, a screen pass to Keanu Grice. Grice slips a tackle and gets some very valuable yardage by diving out of bounds around the 10-yard line. Love the play call, just quick. They knew Case was going to be bringing the pressure, dump the running back out to the side, give him a little more breathing room. Yeah, you want to talk about some pressure. <laughs> Skyler Wade is running possessed, trying to come up with a safety. Second down and two. And flags fly on a false start. And they're right back to the goal line. Number 66, half the distance to the goal. Full five yards, second down. Please put 159 on the clock. 159. All right, so they make it a, an addendum to the clock. Since, he, since the line of scrimmage was the 10, it was not a half the distance to the goal penalty. If you're the case defense, you're keeping everything in front, protecting the sidelines. Guys on the D-line, you are one, pretty much one sack away from changing this entire game, pretty much effectively killing it off. Over the middle, thrown behind the receiver and nearly intercepted by Brian Victor. Now Westminster, like we've been alluding to all night, third and long. And this is the trouble zone for this Case Western defensive line. Lease, Josh Smith, Cam Brown, all of them, they know it's going to be a pass. They know exactly what they have to do, one sack away from pretty much ending the game. Third and six, Grice dropped the football. They wave it incomplete. A huge hit on the play by Schuster. Solid tackle, and who's right on the edge. And again, that's a judgment call. Some people say you need to make a football move after you catch it. Some people say it's two steps. Pretty much at the referee's discretion. Ball game comes down to, the, comes down to this. Westminster has to go for it, cannot afford to punt it away. Titans only have one timeout. Spartans trying to win a defensive battle with their D on the field. Konechka. Not feeling too much pressure. Guns it over the middle. It's broken up. Deflected by Luke Bedell, and the Spartans are going to ice a victory. There it is. I mean, we knew coming into this, it's going to be a tight game. It was going to come down to the end, no matter how many points are scored. Here we are, one point ball game. Case defense is able to step up one final time. Well, let's be fair here. It's not entirely over. Westminster's got one timeout. It is highly improbable that Westminster will pull this out. But it's not over yet, and the Spartans know it. It's a matter of executing at this point. I think on the first play, you have to run the ball and force them to use that timeout. And then if you want to get creative from there, you can. 1.45 to go. Westminster needs a turnover. Day the handoff. Touchdown. Case Western Reserve. Beautiful execution down the stretch. And that's, you know, that's a sign of a playoff team. Being able to withstand the change of momentum. Westminster scoring 13 straight points at one point in this game. You got to be able to absorb it and come back out. You know, forget everything that's happened at this point. You just need to execute. They've executed all throughout this fourth quarter. And, you know, to their credit, that's going to be the reason that they win this football game. This extra point would make it an eight-point game, but either way would keep it a one-possession game. Robertson Albrecht. It was nearly blocked, put up and through. Frankly, 
it's an eight-point game. That was probably best-case scenario for Westminster. Yeah, they will take it. And it, it can be a little awkward as a defender. Do you let them score? Because, I mean, now you're looking at it. One score game, they would need to get the two-point conversion, but they have a minute 40. They've shown, you know, throughout the night, when they strike, it can be quick. Cox, two long touchdown receptions. Again, Case Western defense just needs to stay, you know, stay true to their fundamentals, keep everything in front of them, and if you tackle, you will win this football game. They've got their timeout in their back pocket. You know, I, I almost wonder if Scott Benzel said let them score. What do you think? I tend to think that they don't let that happen. The player, at least it doesn't come from the head coach if it does. Sure. Maybe the players right. have enough, enough wherewithal or football IQ to see it and recognize what the situation is. But it's weird. it can be kind of awkward to say to yourself, we're going to let the other team score. Sure. But like you mentioned, I mean, this, they had to score again to win, right, so right. they get the ball back here. Yeah, but, I mean, it was best-case scenario for Westminster. So these kickoffs can be a little scary. Again, it just comes down to tackling. Gang tackle, full effort from everybody that's on the field. And, I mean, like you said, if you're Westminster, you got a shot, and that's all you can ask for. Well, perhaps it was premature for me to say it was over because we might see some fireworks down the end of the game. Westminster wants to have a say at it. They're lucky they didn't touch the, the knee down inside the four. Bryce Hill gives them good field position at the 36. They've got a minute 34 and one timeout to find their way up the field, 66 yards. They'll need a touchdown and a two-point conversion, hoping, uh, hoping to force the second overtime game in the President's Athletic Conference today. Grove City beat Carnegie Mellon 29-28 in double overtime. That's a big win for Grove City. Yeah, it's a program-building win. I and mean, Carnegie Absolutely. Mellon's another one of the big boys in this conference. Grove City went two years at one point without a victory, so it's a huge win for that locker room and that head coach. All right, Cole Konechka, Western PA kid. What's he made of? Miscommunication there with Valente. Second down. And we are waiting for Mr. Brown to show up. Will he get one final signature play within this game? Westminster still holding on to that one timeout. Probably going to wait and use one, use that for, you know, the beauty of having that timeout is it allows, it opens up the middle of the field. You don't have to exclusively throw to the sidelines. You don't have to run up and spike it immediately. You, st you do have that one chance to take a breath and rework rework the offense. Second and ten. Konechka under duress. He gets out of a sack because his offensive lineman helps him stay up. He gets bent over awkwardly. Oh, boy, that can be a really scary thing to see your quarterback bending oddly. I'm yeah, not I'm sure not, why that happened. No, I'm not really sure why the refs didn't blow it dead. When you have two guys hanging on him and an offensive lineman holding him up, at the, I mean, at that point he's sacked. you got to blow the whistle to prevent stuff like that. That's just a, a safety thing. But, you know, focusing timeout. on the play. Westminster, that'll be the third. Watch Final his knees timeout. here. And at this point, it's, it's dead. It's blow done. It dead. Yeah, he's lucky that. He got bent backwards with his knees bending the right way because that's that's got bad news written all over it. Yep, well, let's not lose sight of the you know the outstanding play made by Josh Smith sure. there. Speed rush coming around the edge. He's been doing it all night. If it hasn't been Cam Brown, it's been Josh Smith. Looked like Andrew Lease was coming up the middle on that play as well. And, I mean, it forces, forces Westminster's hand. Now no timeouts. Makes it a little more difficult to throw in, in the middle of the field. If you are going to throw in the middle of the field, what can be tough is getting the lineman up to the ball, getting everybody set and spiking it. So we'll see. Third and looks like third and 16. Two plays to get 16 yards. No more timeouts for Westminster. Konechka zings it over the middle. It is incomplete. Cox hung it up there, suspended in the air, and Spartans almost put it away. Game of inches. Looked like Luke Bedell was going to have the game at an interception there. Just could not get his hands on it. So it comes down to a fourth and 16. And with no timeouts remaining, this is absolutely the big play of the game. Westminster doesn't get a first down. It's over. Kineshka. Fires. It's caught. He doesn't have first down yardage. Why did he run out of bounds early? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Connor Cox. 
just and that comes down that's just awareness knowing the situation on the field surprising that it's a veteran like Cox losing sight of where he was on the field but yeah K I mean Case Western's defense just survives Ben don't break allow the completion and stuff like that happens I mean at the end of the day they're 19 20 year old kids and they can you know just lose sight of where they are so Case Western looks like they're going to pull it out 21 13 huge win for the Spartans you knew whoever emerged from this from this game it was going to be a hard fought win and looks like Case Western's going to get it done wow Saxton takes a knee he'll need to do one more but the Spartans are going to celebrate here in Cleveland tonight Drew Saxton 25 of 39 301 through the air and a touchdown Colt Morgan, seven catches, 103 yards, and a score. Tip of the cap to this Westminster team who is really good. And frankly, I think they're pretty well coached. Yeah, it's, it's two strong, strong teams, leaders of the Presence Athletic Conference, and like we said, hard-fought win for Case Western. They definitely earned it on both sides of the football. So as the clock runs out, the final score tonight will be 21 to 13. Job very well done by Case Western Reserve against easily one of the best teams in the league this season. It's not going to get any easier with Washington and Jefferson coming up next week, but Case takes care of business here on their home field.